All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of Heart to Heart, a Just Life special for the girls. I'm Sonia Radoya. And I'm Cicely Porter. And today we have a very special guest on today, Darian McAdow. Hello. So Darian, just kind of explain how we know each other. Um, okay. <laughs> um, I don't know, like from the very beginning. Yeah, we go way back. Yeah, probably elementary school. I don't think preschool, right? I don't, Maybe I don't remember. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, it's been that long to where we can't even remember. So, I mean, and we've stuck through it you That's guys are Rensselaer farm girls yeah, Rensselaer together. farming girls <laughs> yeah Rensselaer this is Tucky. literally our first time meeting ever mm-hmm. and I already love her so <laughs> oh yay here we go yeah got the approval Sweet. so um we're just gonna talk about like going through our 20s today um talk about life as usual but real quick we're gonna do a quick life update so Sonia what's been up um school we have been working very hard on a documentary or not a documentary of a, a <laughs> horror film a it's comedy. more of a comedy horror film um but yeah i feel like i'm just very swamped with school and kind of having anxiety trying to figure out a job and figuring out i guess we'll get into that later but i feel very anxious about it every day. I've applied to a lot of jobs and I quite literally have not heard back from a single one. So that is promising and exciting. Um, But other than that, I've just kind of been uh, ready for summer. I'm going on a cruise. Ooh, In a couple weeks, I'll be in Europe, in Italy, uh, Greece, and then I'm gonna be in Ireland. So, in Dublin, and I know you were there, Uh so got to tell me all the cool spots to go to but I'm super excited and then I actually just booked another trip in June on my birthday I'm going to Disney for the first time in my life with my boyfriend and his family so I'm really excited for that like I've never been so I'm gonna be a Disney adult for my 22nd birthday but yeah that's um that's really it so I've been waiting to tell you my grandma just booked a cruise to Italy (laughs) wait when I am it's still getting figured out but, um, uh, yeah, I'll tell you, you need to go at the, it's like more towards the beginning of May. Okay. I don't really know if that's like manageable. It's like less we, than a month away. We but. were planning, uh, either the last week of May or the first week of June. Ooh. Okay. Awesome. Mm. Okay. I have a lot of stuff planned this summer though. And like same with you, I've been applying to tons of internships. Haven't heard back from any. Um, but I've kind of just accepted it. Like, maybe I'm not supposed to have an internship right now, and maybe I should travel. Like, this is my last maybe summer. we're going to get rich and famous off this podcast, <laughs> so run up those views, please. <laughs> Barstool, sponsor me. <laughs> but I feel that. I'm like, you know what? I just have to have faith in, like, the bigger picture and, like, I mean, where I'm meant to be. And maybe I'm not supposed to be like everybody else and doing what everyone else is doing in their 20s. I mean, I feel like I've already kind of strayed away from the college norm anyways by being home for college all four years so yeah um i mean iu is a weird school because it's commuter school so most of the students are come from home yeah um when i was 18 i was like i'm moving out like i that's just who i am i my parents and i like i love my parents but we're just very different and i wanted to get that independence but um yeah um i'm still super swamped with school too um i have a documentary due for my senior capstone project yeah and i just got something more added on my plate i was elected student body president Woo-hoo. so uh we'll see where yeah where that I would takes like me to say that i was her campaign manager she did a great job <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and but yeah i knew you would do it i'm i always tell her i'm like today you're president of iun and tomorrow it's going to be the united states <laughs> like i could totally picture you being the president what can she do that's my (laughs) question uh with that though i'm going to new york this summer new york city awesome yeah i'm so excited i've never been so you know we're gonna have to do a travel podcast Mm -hmm. yeah after um maybe heart to heart goes worldwide (laughs) (laughs) mr worldwide over here oh my gosh she is right there i did think we should like put him in the corner awkwardly (laughs) (laughs) and uh darian just got back from arizona oh so tell us about that yeah, so it was a work trip. They kind of send you out probably once or twice a year if you get invited. Um, I guess Arizona is one of those where they only take like 
10 or 12 people from my company and I was one of them that was able mm. to go which was super cool um we really were just kind of learning about so I'm an inside sales representative for heavy equipment so rental equipment not mm. necessarily heavy um but we were kind of learning about our competitors and our own equipment and run, running it and stuff and of course I was with a bunch of dudes because it's definitely a male dominated company so but it was mm-hmm. super fun I mean it was a lot but it was it was fun so I just got back yesterday night and I was like I'm not gonna miss this podcast so I took the day off Aww. and I was super excited and explain what you do so as an inside sales rep we kind of I don't know I look at it as like a stepping stone to the outside sales where you get to work with the companies on their job sites and stuff like that. But right now I'm stuck inside and our customers will call in our store. They tell us what they need and we kind of set it up. We get the Mm -hmm. trucking out for the equipment and then they work on it. They let us know when they're done. Um, But really all it is is I just don't get to see my customers face to face to face very often. Sometimes we have people that come in and anytime I can take care of them. But um, that's something that I'm really wanting to build up to is Mm -hmm. be able to take care of them on my own and like when something goes wrong I go to them I don't call them on the phone and stuff so that's a little hard because I like to talk to people I like to so right now I'm just kind of getting ready for it hopefully I'll get lucky and build up to it but we'll see but for the most part do you enjoy your job I do yeah I just look at it honestly I just look at it as a as a training for the next step Mm -hmm. so there's some times where I definitely feel not behind but not a hundred percent what I want to do like it's kind of I don't know. It's hard whenever something's messed up and all I can do is leave a voicemail or something, Mm -hmm. you know, like I want to go to them. I want to explain what happened um, and I want to be the reason that it's fixed. So sometimes it kind of sucks because I'm not the face that they get to see. And I would I would prefer it to be that way. Mm -hmm. But that's all right. We're just getting used to it and hoping to build up. We'll see. Mm -hmm. And then how did you land in that job? Like, what's your story leading up? (laughs) Oh, geez. There's a lot. (laughs) Buckle up. Yeah. So whenever I graduated high school, I was supposed to actually come to IUN. Mm -hmm. I was enrolled. And then they told me that I was going to be on the night shift and like for my schooling. And I didn't really feel comfortable coming here at night, driving all that way. I just didn't want to do it. So Ivy Tech was closer and we were a part of, you know, COVID class 2020. So everything was online. So I went to Ivy Tech in Lafayette for a semester. And I mean, I had great grades, but there was something about like, I've just felt like I wasn't learning anything and it was all behind a screen. And I just, I don't do well with that. Like I was saying, I am an in-person gal Mm -hmm. all the way. So, and my parents, you know, they, didn't help us financially and stuff like that so I had to pay for all of my schooling and I I paid it in full but I was you know at that point $2,500 in and I felt like I didn't have a single clue of what I don't know I felt like I didn't learn anything really so I was like I don't like this I'm going for school um to be in sales anyway so I left and I wanted to find a sales job I was like I'd rather get paid because the amount of times that you see in a job like application it's either four years of schooling or four years of sales experience yeah. so I was like I'm just gonna do that so I worked on it I ended up wanting to I learned more about the real estate world and I wanted to get my license I wanted to do everything I possibly could so the only thing that was offered at the moment was a online school I did it completely failed it and I I mean at this point you're you've already dropped out of school Mm -hmm. then you're (laughs) failing what you wanted to do in the first place so that was really hard I took a little break I just went back to waitressing I was totally behind and then I found out that there were some in-person classes that were doing it in Crown Point so I started driving there passed it I did awesome and I finally passed like my actual real estate exam and got my license so so real quick um, what was going through your mind like um, after you failed the first time and like after stopping Ivy Tech, like what was your initial reaction? Honestly, I had a lot going on. So I was in a pretty serious relationship at that time too. So I, this sounds so bad, but I was super like, I guess getting comfortable of, I don't know, in failing. I was just like, I'm just gonna figure out, I don't know. It was just, I was waitressing and I was just getting comfortable and I didn't like that. I felt like I wasn't pushing myself anymore. So whenever I found the online school, I was like, I've got to get into it and I've got to take it serious. So I kind of like shut 
everything out. I mean, I was in my room studying at all times, like 24 seven. I told my boyfriend at the time, like this was going to be my life and I really needed to focus on it. But then, I mean, of course it didn't go as planned anyway, even after I got my yeah, license. That's life. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so I got yeah. my license and I didn't even end up using it very long, which we can get into that too. But no, I think you made some like really good points, especially about school. Um, when you like don't feel like you're learning anything especially I mean I've gone through so many courses here that you're just like doing what you can to get through and succeed you're not even thinking like oh what am I necessarily learning you're like oh I'm just doing this because I need to I need to get through I mean I felt that a lot and school has never really been like my thing I think college was kind of like a restart for me for that mm -hmm. but I've definitely felt that way and then as far as like being comfortable with failing I mean I can definitely vouch for that like I've been in that position before where you just get comfortable in doing like the bare minimum yes and you no longer push yourself so like how did you come out of that mentality like what was your driving force that you were like this is it like I really need to make a change because I feel like even sometimes now I'm like feeling super unmotivated and I feel stuck where I'm at and I don't know how to get out of the situation that I'm mm -hmm. in was there like a specific driving force that you were like okay this is it like this is the day I'm waking up and I'm making a change in my life honestly so whenever I graduated high school, I mean, even through high school, I didn't have the closest relationship with God. And then whenever I started failing, I really just kind of like surrendered myself and I started praying and praying and that finally like, I, I mean, not to throw religion into it, but it really just woke me up and I was like, I need to get my shit oh, no. together. We're we're both we get spiritual. Very, yeah, Perfect. we're both very religious too. Perfect. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, that's, I think that that's a really good point. I've definitely been feeling more like, spiritual and trying to really just like put my life in the hands of like the higher spirit right. you know like feel like there's a bigger purpose for me mm -hmm. and I started I don't know it sounds kind of weird but it's true like I started saying what I wanted to happen out loud I would you know <laughs> you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like I am the shit and it really does help mm -hmm. like I, I started feeling it. I was working out again because whenever I tell you I was failing, like I was failing in all aspects. I felt like I was, you know, not the best girlfriend. I wasn't the best friend. Like I was just, I was not reaching out to my friends at all. Wasn't the best sister, not the best daughter. Like I just, I felt like I was failing in all aspects, not working on myself at all. And I was just getting comfortable with failing and not being the best version of myself. And then I finally just kind of like, like I said, I surrendered myself. I started to pray every single day and night. I mean, reading the Bible, which I never did ever, um, and it, it helped me a ton. And it finally woke me up, and I was like, I need to do something. You know what? I completely like hearing that is honestly really refreshing because, like, even right now I feel like I'm definitely in that place of just feeling, like, really – like, I'm not the best version of myself. Like, mm -hmm. I often tell myself, like, I miss the person I once was. And I do, like, love who I've become. I feel like I've grown a lot as a person, but I can completely relate in the sense of, like, there are days when I don't want to do anything but lay in bed and, like, escape my own reality. Like, sit on TikTok for hours and just, like, wallow in self-pity. Mm -hmm. And those are definitely hard days because those are the days when, like you said, I'm not reaching out to people I'm not like making an effort to be my best self I'm not the best daughter I'm not the best girlfriend and not the best friend so you know it is like refreshing to hear that other people go through that and that there is a light at the end of the tunnel because when you're in that funk like you honestly feel like you're never gonna shake it you oh, know yeah. but um I think you know like hearing your story it definitely gives me a lot of hope and like makes me feel like I am human and that this is a normal thing to go through, especially at our age and our point in life. I, I think we have like this purpose anxiety too, like mm -hmm. our generation especially. Mm -hmm. Like oh, we have sure. to change the change the world somehow. And we have to know what we want to do and our culture pushes college, like you have to go to college. Like mm -hmm. that's just not reality. I think we're all scared of like being mediocre. Yeah. 100%. I mean, I know I am like every day I like wake up and I'm like, I know I have a bigger purpose than what I'm currently doing you know and I think us three like we have God like a lot of people who don't have God go through like an extreme identity crisis an mm -hmm. extreme mm -hmm. like what is my purpose but I know um 
I've been in that situation where I just feel like my life is on pause. Like I'm not growing. I'm mm-hmm. not. I'm just staying there. Stagnant. Stagnant. Mm-hmm. And um, that causes burnout. That causes anxiety. That causes depression. But when you give your like depression, anxiety to God, like that's where it just shifts. That's when you get out of that comfort zone and you start growing. Mm-hmm. I had a friend one time tell me that like movement in your life is still movement. Like no matter what you're doing when you're like moving, you're still working towards something. You're still putting an effort. You might be crawling. You might be walking super slow, but at the end of the day, like you're still moving, you know? And so I try to think about that. Like the days when I'm hard on myself, I'm like, you know what? I am in this moment trying my hardest and tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow is going to be better. And I agree with what you're saying. Like I have a really... I strongly believe in, like, the power of words and, like, manifesting and speaking things into existence, like, positive affirmations. When you tell yourself, like, you are amazing, you are beautiful, like, you start to believe that. And that's something I really try to work on. I mean, I spent, like, $12 on an app that'll give me, like, affirmations, like, every two hours and it'll be, like, Sonia's trying her hardest. And I'll say it out loud and I'm like, you know what? That's just like the little thing I needed to hear, even if it's from an app, you know? I, I have it on my phone. So like every hour it changes. I this noticed that on free. your phone yesterday, <laughs> honestly. I uh, I had a book during this time where I was struggling really bad and I would write, I mean, over and over and over the things that I wanted to happen. And I will say, like, I've looked back on it now. There was a point in time when I moved to Lafayette, like I went through it and I checked off about over half of what I wanted to happen. And it was insane. Like, I didn't expect it to come, and I could look at it again now, and I could probably scratch off another half. And I continue to do it, and I continue to build, and I keep seeing myself, like, get these things done. And I I do 100% believe in manifestation. I believe in prayer. Like, all of Mm -hmm. it is working. I mean, but you just, there is, you know, you were talking about being hard on yourself during that time that I was failing I was a little too hard because I tend to forget that I was literally 18 years old yeah I was 18 years old and I thought that I needed to have my shit together Mm -hmm. and that's something that I kind of did it bit me in the ass a little bit just because I'm sorry I'm cussing I'm not (laughs) sorry (laughs) Um, but um I when I moved out at 19 I was nowhere near ready and um it was scary it was really scary and I thought like maybe I was a little too hard on myself. I mean, I got out of it, but at the same time, like we do need to accept that you are trying your best where you are. And it's not always going to go the way that you expect it to. I mean, my, my life is nowhere near where I thought I would be at 21. Yeah, for sure. I mean, same here. I still live at home. Um, and when, especially when you start comparing yourself to like other people who are your age and you start to get this idea of what you should be doing because of what you see other people doing. And like you, I just need to tell myself, like, I'm not them. I'm myself. I have my own path. Like, I don't need to be like them. And I like do find comfort in that. And I think Also, everyone needs to be more gentle on themselves. Like, we're all the hardest on ourselves. And, you know, people probably look at you and are like, oh, like, she's doing so well. She's trying really hard. But in your mind, you're like, I'm doing horrible. Like, I need to be doing more with my life. And I just need to remember that. A hundred percent. I uh, I don't know. I think Cicely remembers. I whenever I moved out, I died. I was going through an identity crisis. I dyed my hair like bleach blonde, and I would post these crazy Snapchat stories. Like I had a <laughs> private story, and it was just updates on my life. And the amount of people that I mean, I'll still talk to them sometimes, and they're like, you know, you were living your best life. You were so crazy. You know, you were amazing, and that was the lowest of the low. Like I literally didn't want to be here anymore, and that's when I was posting the most. I mean, I. I was acting like it was the best time of my life and and it's crazy too because you want to know the people that didn't act like that Cicely <laughs> Cicely would never slide up on that shit and be like oh my god you're doing so well like I think deep down Cicely knew like Darian is not okay um but it I mean it kind of opened my eyes on who my true friends are too because there were people that were like really I don't know cheering on the bad behavior and like I don't know it was just I was on a slope and I had true friends that just they were not even interacting with it like we knew that this is not Darian and she's not acting herself and I don't know definitely woke me up that's for sure I literally verbatim (laughs) could not agree more I definitely agree I 
made a reputation for myself for being like a fun, like party girl, like just wanted to have a good time. And like you said, you know, everyone probably thought like, oh, this girl's having the time of her life. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like that was truly like the lowest points in my life. And that's why, you know, I was posting, like making it seem one way when it really wasn't, you know? And so I completely agree with that you try and put on a persona that you're so happy and you're having the time of your life when you're actually at the lowest. And that's why nowadays it's like, I am very happy. I'm in a great relationship. Like it's in ways the happiest I've ever been in my life. Like I definitely struggle mentally just because of the point I am in my life. But in other ways, like I'm the happiest I've ever been. He's my best friend. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel the need to like prove to anybody that I'm having the time of my life. Like I value my privacy and like I don't want everyone to know what I'm doing all the time. Like I feel like that definitely shifted. And when in ways like you get happier, you kind of switch off that like fake personality that you put out to everyone you Mm -hmm. have that like burden come off Mm -hmm. like we have social media our generation and i feel like we all have to look perfect on our site or our website whatever in reality like the people who post the happiest stuff are the most depressed Mm -hmm. and like there's studies on this like relationships for example the relationships that post like happy three months like they are the worst relationships and they never last Mm -hmm. um so i i always felt pressure like oh i have to be perfect on Instagram like oh my hands kind of awkward I can't post that oh mm-hmm. my like now I really don't care it's yeah. a memory yeah it's a memory and if you're truly happy you're not gonna worry about that stuff mm-hmm. at the end of the day I feel like I used to post a lot more like just because I wanted everyone to know what I'm doing and now it's like I honestly rarely post on my Instagram anymore like I would post like twice a month in high school and now I'm like what do I have to prove like at the end of the day the people who know me and who are a part of my life like know that I'm happy know that I'm doing well so it's like I don't need to go out of my way to post that you know like I don't know I feel like just a lot of things have shifted and like even when I look back at my life like two years ago I'm like in such a better place than like what I was trying to make it seem you know like I really am the person I wanted people to think back then Mm -hmm. yeah the main account that I post on now is Facebook and if that doesn't make you feel like (laughs) my (laughs) favorite social media account is LinkedIn that's how I know I'm old I literally I told Mm -hmm. that to my mom the other day I'm like I know I'm getting old when LinkedIn is quite literally my favorite social media account like every day I'm like Ooh, almost at 500 plus connects. Yeah. Like, no, I want honestly, that. Connect with me, Sonia Radoya. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, that's the one I use the most. Like, now I'm thinking about it. Like, yeah, that and Pinterest. Oh, it's I, same. I, Pinterest I don't really is amazing. use Pinterest a lot, but I know, like, you got all your fancy nails on yeah. there. So I need to get more inspo. Guaranteed, whenever you move out, Pinterest will be your best friend. I mean, recipes to the max. Like, everyone's like, oh my gosh, you know how to cook. Like, I she Pinterest. Does. Pinterest that's, is it. That's does. a hobby that I've like really come to enjoy because my parents just recently got like a place in Florida. So they spend a lot of time in Florida. So like in a way, I'll say I'm like half on my own. But I've become like I never used to cook before because I've always been at home. Like you want ramen, I can cook that up. <laughs> but until my parents moved out, like I really wasn't responsible and like cooking for myself every day. And now I'm like I crave the food I want to make. Like, mm-hmm. say, uh, what's well, happening? You made me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel Cicely came over one day in the middle of like <laughs> a full fledged blizzard. Yeah. Like, we were at a conference in Chicago and we were like, okay, we should leave the city and beat the blizzard. We were driving into the eye of the storm. <laughs> and Cicely was like, I was driving so slow. Like, both hands on the wheel. I'm pretty sure I literally had the music volume on like 10. And usually if you ever drive past me, like I am that obnoxious girl with my volume all the way up at a stoplight, like don't care. And Cicely was like, I don't know how you're doing this. Like I would be having an anxiety attack right now in my head. I'm like, girl, I am. (laughs) But we went back to my house and my parents were leaving for Florida the next day. So there was no food. We were literally like rabbits eating (laughs) only vegetables, like I don't even know what else we had to eat. It was a struggle meal, but it, it was, was good. That's why Cicely loved it. It was vegetables. Yeah, <laughs> I know. A healthy little girl. I was like, I if this it. were anybody else, they would literally be like, I would rather eat my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Um, 
What was I going to say? <laughs> this is a cut moment. <laughs> uh, going back to um, living on your own and moving out, tell us, like, yes. your, like, the best and the worst. Ooh, okay. So, I guess I never really got into what happened after I got my real estate license. I moved to Lafayette originally because um, I started working as a buyer's agent for this I don't want to say they were a small company. They were a family company, but, um, and they had gotten real, they are very successful, but they aren't like a chain, so they're not huge. Mm -hmm. And they hired me as a buyer's agent, which I didn't, I didn't realize, like I didn't study the market or anything like that. And which you should, obviously, if you're interested in real estate, but, um, buyer's agent, you can strictly only work with buyers and, whenever I was going in, I mean, it was COVID. It was not a buyer's market whatsoever because all of the sellers, I mean, whenever your house is just sitting there during COVID, I mean, there are a lot of people that picked out things that they hated about their house and they're getting it redone and then the value's upping like crazy. So they want all want to sell their house. Well, with everyone making a crap ton of money on their houses, that means that the buyers are going to have to spend a crap ton of money. Yeah. And first time home buyers, I mean, that's not going to work. So I probably showed a total of like 70 houses and I did this over the course of like six months and I didn't get paid a single dime. Oh my gosh. So during this, which a lot of companies I learned will pay their buyer's agents like the first six months, I just didn't get that. Like I said, a smaller company. Mm -hmm. And so I was working my butt off, but at the same time, like trying to get money in. So I was still serving. I served at like two places at this time, a brewery and, um, this nice little restaurant. And then I was also a nanny. So I had four jobs at the That's time. That's insane. And actually, I'm sorry, five, because I also was driving to DeMont from Lafayette and working at a golf course because that's where I was making my most most of my money. If you guys ever want a good place to work, please go to a golf course. That was the best money I ever made in my life. But anyway, so I was working five jobs at the time. So that was probably the worst because I remember I was at it was a Sunday and I was serving and obviously on a Sunday you're not expecting to show any houses anyway but I had one of these families and keep in mind I haven't been paid a dime for real estate so I was really like losing faith in this family that I had already showed like 10 houses to they call me and they're like we need to see this home ASAP and I'm like in the bathroom because I'm not allowed to be on my phone whenever I'm serving at this place and I said you know right now I can't do it because I didn't tell them but I have bills to pay right now I'm mm -hmm. counting on on this money to pay my rent but I was like but I can absolutely do it Monday morning like first thing or if you want to wait I get off I didn't tell them that I was working but I got off in like three hours so I said I would do it that evening and they said you know what you can't be here right now we're gonna hire someone else hung up on me wow. after that I was like I have to find something else like I cannot keep doing this I just remember bawling in the bathroom and then I just ended up going to the woman that hired me and I was like you know what I can't do this like I can't afford my groceries like I'm barely paying my rent right now and I can't keep coming to you five days a week and oops drop my makeup bag <laughs> five days a week and not making anything six days a week I um mean, just five jobs like that is insane and at such a young yeah. age too like yeah. I can't even imagine that anxiety and pressure that is on you like so much burnout like it was it was awful and that was another thing like I just felt so low and whenever I stopped the real estate I mean that was why I dropped out of school so I was like what do I do now and it was really scary so I started you know saving my serving money and I went on Indeed Indeed was my best friend at that time and I started looking and I was like I loved working with the people that I was working with like I loved meeting these families I knew that I liked working with people and talking with them and learning their stories so I wanted to continue doing that but I was like I also need to get paid so mm -hmm. I started looking and looking and I found like a car salesman job but it said that they were salaried on top of commission and I was like perfect so it's gonna be what I was doing except cars and I'm getting paid for it plus a little bit extra if I do good at it so the only problem was is it was in indie. So I was leaving my apartment at dark and I was coming back at dark. It was long hours. I killed it though. Like I did great. Um, but I was also, I just wasn't happy. It was in the middle of the winter and we had a really bad storm in my apartment. I seriously was stuck in my apartment for like five days. I couldn't go to work mm -hmm. and I had just got hired on. So that looked awful. And in the mix of this, my parents were super worried because they didn't like that I was leaving my apartment at dark, going on the interstate in these terrible, terrible weather conditions. Yeah. And my dad, thank God for him, he was looking and he was like, there is a McAllister Reynolds in Lafayette 
it's an inside sales rep job, so it's not being on the outside. Like, you're not going to be able to talk to a bunch of people. But he's like, if you apply, like, you're not going to have that drive. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can build your... Yeah, you start somewhere. Yeah, you start somewhere, and this is a great company to work for. And he told me, he's like, I don't think that you'll get the job because it's a really hard company to get for. Like, once you're in, you're in. He's like, but at least that company will know you're interested. I was like, okay, submit my app get a call on an interview which I will I'll give it to him and I'll give it to the other connections that I had I think I got the interview because of the people that I knew just one of those companies but no once shame I, in that hey, yeah it's all networking. about networking all yeah. about networking um and so once I scored the interview though I I think I I was I was good after that I'm one of those people like just give me the interview I mean you're talking about struggling not hearing back from people and I will say right now like the job that I have now, I think the onboarding process, it was like four months and I had to do like four interviews and it was a lot, but I will say like, I don't be afraid to be annoying. Yeah. Like I called them all the time. I wanted an update on my interview. I wanted to know how I was doing, what my competitors were like, how many there were. I mm-hmm. mean, if you ask those questions, they're going to know that you care. Yeah. Um, and that was with any job. Be annoying. If you're not hearing back from someone, call them and say, I want to know what's going on. Like, give me an update because guaranteed your other, pe- like the people that you're going against, yeah. they're probably already thinking, well, haven't heard back. Let's move on. Like, be that person. Like, mm-hmm. remind them who you are. So that's what got me where I was. I've been struggling with that because I applied to this um, sports company in Chicago, mm-hmm. which I really, really wanted. And I've had like two or three interviews with them. And they're like, oh, we'll let you know in the next week. Never heard from them. So I sent them an email. And you know how discouraging it is when (laughs) she can't get a job? I'm like, oh, I'm screwed. (laughs) I am screwed. (laughs) But but then I sent another email. Still no response. Next week, I call them. Still no response. Hmm. So last week, I applied to every other position they had filled. I was going to say, I think at that point, though, if you're... Like, obviously feel out the situation if there's, like, a huge work trip or something and they're closed. Yeah. yeah. But if and it, w- it was opening day, so okay, I'm going to give yeah. it a little slack. Yeah. But I'm like, come on. Like, we have to do so much to just get in the door. Right. And that's what's frustrating is, like, they don't realize that, like, this is our, like, entire world. Mm-hmm. Like, you're – we are kind of dependent on them. So, like, you know, my biggest thing is it's like, okay, if you're not going to hire me, that's fine. But it's like your professional company, like I am actively seeking a job. I think the minimal thing I deserve is a simple rejection. Like I would just rather know that it's a no than exactly. be like, oh, is there a chance that I still might get it? Because that's yeah. like the closure, the worst <laughs> feeling. Exactly. Like we love closure. Yeah. But it's really like to me that's upsetting and I'm like, how are you a professional company and you don't even have the decency to just send a simple email and say like i'm sorry we already filled this position or we're looking for somebody else who has more qualifications like that's fine my feelings would not be hurt my feelings get hurt when you literally ghost me like Mm -hmm. you're supposed to be a professional company and that's just like very frustrating when i've applied to so many jobs like and it was hard because like i I feel like getting over that hump where I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to rip off the Band-Aid and I'm going to spend an entire day applying to jobs. Like I put it off for like way too long because I was so anxious about being rejected. And finally, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I was so proud of myself for finally like sticking it out and, you know, giving myself a push. And then I don't even hear back. And like that just kind of like it hurts. It does. Yeah. I really feel like I put myself out there and not even getting a response is very, um, it's very upsetting. I think at that point, especially if you're going through like what Cicely said, sending emails, calling, I think if you're doing all the things that you need to do and they're still not giving you a response without a valid reason, um, I think that's just a company that you don't want to end up working for. Mm -hmm. They obviously don't respect the people that are interested in their company, so I wouldn't even... I don't know. I wouldn't want to work for them. But I will say, like, there was a point with the job that I have now, I was so anxious because at that point, you know, I've accepted that there's a possibility I won't have to, you know, drive all that way. And so I got super invested in this job. I would show up, Mm -hmm. like, go to their head. I don't know where you guys are going, but go to their headquarters. I mean, at least give them your face and be like, hey, I've I've interviewed here. I don't really know how it works. You guys are. Doing, I'm about to do that. You show up to one of the games. Absolutely should. Give <laughs> Make them a, a sign. You didn't hire me. <laughs> well, give them a face to your name. I mean, that does everything. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and then I, that's just stuff my dad taught me. I mean, he was like, be annoying. 
I have, so I have a question. Are yes. you 21 or 22? I'm 21. Well, I have to say, like, you are a very, like, insightful and wise person. And I don't know if enough people have told you this, but I'm very proud of you. Like, yeah, you quite literally you. have gone through so much, like, even just hearing all of this. And for our age, like, I'm extremely proud of you. I mean, I know, like, you definitely inspire me that when things, like, don't work out, you kept pushing. And here you are. Like, you found something that you liked, and I know you're not... This isn't, like, exactly what you want to do, but you got your foot in the door, and you can only go up from here. So, like, I'm really happy that I got to meet you and, like, hear your story. I think you're extremely inspiring, and I will definitely be reaching out to you for advice. Absolutely. Yeah, and I mean... I work for a great company, and we are hiring two positions <laughs> if you guys don't end up wanting to do the way that you guys okay, have. So. I mean, <laughs> I, I might. Yeah, I might. I mean, seriously, anyone that's listening, work for a fantastic company, but thank you. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. I don't hear that too often, but that's, I mean, it means the world every time that I do. I guess sometimes I don't even think about how extreme the things that I went through are, especially at my age. I mean, I was just at this work trip. I had someone guess that I was 27. Really? Wow. Yeah, and I was I like, mean, oh, I could see it. Like, you're yeah. way ahead of your time. It's a little different. I mean, and you guys saying, like, comparing yourself, I will say, like, I didn't look at it that way. I thought that I was way behind, and I thought that, you know, especially with the position that I'm in, I mean, every single person, because we have a few of our positions, I'm the only one at that store that doesn't have a college degree. Mm -hmm. And I will say, if you don't have a college degree, don't let that stop you. Like I said, that experience that you have, I mean, basically how I got that job, I just told my story that I told you guys. And I think that they liked that. Like, she struggled, she knows what she wants. And then the biggest thing, too, is like, what motivates you? Like, why are you here? And I will say, like, just be honest in these interviews. I I just straight up said money. I'm like, I am money motivated. And they'll either dig it or they'll hate it. But in my case, they dug it. And they were like, I like that. Like, this girl's kind of, and it's true. I mean, I've always been that way. I'm, I'm definitely success driven. And I never wanted to depend on anyone else. Like, I wanted to get it myself. So that's what, kept me driving but I will say like if you ever need anything absolutely like I'll I'd love to help you guys but I mean like I said just be annoying I I think they hired you because the person you are too because like a degree cannot make you Mm -hmm. like the person you are it's a piece of paper it cannot change your personality it cannot change your drive and you have something that you cannot buy like you are you are so mature for your age like we're talking about and you're so vulnerable like that's Mm -hmm. what It really, um, I think it's the strongest thing in people because people are so scared to open up and be honest and just coming on here for the last like 30, 40 minutes, you've been so open. Yeah. Thank you. I try. And I'm so proud of you. I feel like I've known you (laughs) since preschool. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't see the point in hiding it. I don't, because that's what killed me. I saw people that and I mean, I tried it. I tried doing the stupid Snapchat stories and I was so happy and I was some party girl and that just, that wasn't who I was. And I kind of realized like, it took me further to be vulnerable. Um, be honest with people. If you're struggling, I mean, that's whenever you will get the best advice is if you are honest with someone, you know, I'm struggling. This is what's going on. I don't think that I could have gotten out of the position that I was in, in the real estate business if I didn't tell my boss, like I am struggling yeah. and I'm having a hard time. And I, like, I'm going to admit, I, I surrender. I can't do this anymore. And, I mean, that's the same thing with the religion talk. Like, I didn't get past it until I sat down and I was like, I'm throwing my hands up. Like, I'm waving the white flag. I can't do this anymore. Like, I need help. And that's when I got it. So, I will no, say. Those moments are so, like, eye-opening. Yeah. Because you're like, where, what am I doing? Where mm-hmm. am I going? Like, I just surrender everything to you. Like, just show me the way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's when, like, it does show. Yes. So that's amazing. And, you know, like they say when you hit rock bottom, like, you can only go up from there. <laughs> I think I've hit it a couple different times. I'm like, <laughs> oh, it goes me lower too. and lower. But, no, I mean, like, there is a certain point where you just hit the low and you're like, you know what? You can only go up from here. And you really believe that. And I, I, I do believe in, you know, everything happens for a reason. Like, you struggled and in the time like when you got that call when you were working as a waitress you know I'm sure that was like in your mind in that moment it was probably like the end of the world to you but at the end of the day like it was the driving force that made you 
seek a different position and look at how successful you are now. So everything happens for a reason. Like you are literally a prime example of that. Yeah. And I always live by the motto, um, life happens for you, not to you. A hundred percent. So I like, like that. everything happens for a reason and it's pushing you in the right direction where you are going to end at the end of your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So my last question for you is what has been the hardest part of growing up and kind of just entering life (laughs) oh I don't know I don't want to say like financial status because that's different and I think at the end of the day you look at how little money is I will Mm -hmm. say I think the hardest part of it was getting used to not being around my family as much and like I I I actually I'm not taking that back because that was really hard but finding to love myself was really hard I was going through, I mean, I never even brought it up, but I got out of a five and a half year long relationship during all that time as well. And there was a lot of stuff that went on in that relationship that made me feel like I was just, I was the lowest of the low, like I wasn't anything. And so that kind of affected me in a different way, like being by myself and vulnerable and I don't know, I wasn't around my friends. In Lafayette, I didn't know anybody except my coworkers. And so that was really hard too. I felt, I don't know, I wasn't satisfying myself in a way. Like, I didn't like the person that I was. And then when I really started, I don't know, being alone and finding a way to like it, um, I found that I'm kind of a catch and I love myself. (laughs) And I'm a fun time. And that's kind of what, that was the hardest thing, was getting to know, getting to know myself, loving myself, loving the things that I love to do on my own I made myself I would go out to eat by myself I would do events like by myself I just I was just finding a way to figure out what I loved who I was and that was the hardest part but I will say like I wouldn't have been able to be where I am now if I didn't do that I mean being independent is super duper hard but it'll help you so much in the long run I mean like I said, I kind of found out that I'm a freaking catch. Mm-hmm. See, yeah, that's definitely something I struggle with. I think, like, the biggest thing for me with growing up is, like, actually having to look at myself for, like, exactly what I am. Like, embrace the fact that I have flaws. I have made so many mistakes in my life. There have been times when I wasn't a good person, when I wasn't a good friend. And, like, looking at myself and taking myself for what I am, but also understanding that through those mistakes that I've made, I've become a better me and I've learned so much and knowing that I'm never going to be a bad friend again and I'm never going to make those decisions again. Like, I I do spend a lot of time alone. Like, I won't say that I have, like, all of these friends um, here at home, so I like to hear, you know, embracing like being alone and learning to love being alone because I do feel like I've become a very like dependent person. Like I love spending time with my boyfriend and he's away at school. So like when I say bye to him, like every goodbye is like so heartbreaking Mm -hmm. and hard for me, but I need to like embrace, you know, my alone time and appreciate myself and learn like to go out to eat by myself, figure out what Sonia likes, you know, like just start doing better for myself instead of feeling like so low because I'm alone. Mm -hmm. A lot of people base like their self-worth on others too. So when you're in these like long-term relationships, you can look at them and like if it's a toxic relationship, it can kind of reflect a toxic self-love to yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's a really big problem that women face. Like if your boyfriend is like, just terrible to you and abuses you it kind of questions like what's wrong with me like what am I doing wrong cheats on you it's like well obviously that girl had something that I don't and it makes you reflect on yourself and you just I don't know I literally hated myself like there was I was not happy with myself and so I forced myself to get used to being alone what makes me cool why do people like to be around me you know because I see how others look at me and it's like well what do they see And so I really started to dig into that. And now, you know, especially with these jobs coming up and stuff, I'd say if they ever ask you like a crazy question on, you know, why should we hire, why should we hire you? What value would you bring to this company? Like, well, you don't have me. 
that's something that I will say to the end is you guys don't have me. That's what I was learning on this Arizona trip. I was with a bunch of outside salesmen and stuff, and they were like, my selling point is these companies don't have me. And I'm I'm pretty freaking cool, and I'll get the job yeah. done. And, I mean, that's in everything, though, is – you, I don't know, you are your selling point, you are your person, and you've got to, I mean, being in a relationship, that's awesome, but you also have to figure out, like, I don't know, you have to have your alone time. You, yeah, you and you be dependent on them. Yeah. Yeah. Co- yeah, codependency is definitely a very real thing, mm-hmm. um, but I feel like there's some days when I wake up and I'm like, I'm Sonia freaking Redoya. Like, 100%. <laughs> I am, you know, like, I'm me like there's nobody else on this earth that I would rather be like I have something that I don't see other people have mm-hmm. you know like and then there are some days where I'm like I'm sorry I'm freaking <laughs> you know I'm so not that cool. I really I do like fluctuate between that but you know I've always like growing up I always had like confidence in myself and I knew who I was and like I never cared what people said about me and there were like perks in that you know like you don't care what people think like you just do you but then like as I've gotten older I'm like I do care what people think Mm -hmm. about me like I don't want to be disliked like I want people to see me for who I am and the way that I view myself versus like the way I may have portrayed myself certain times you know because I am only human like I've made mistakes I can sit here and say like I can, I can embrace that, but I do, you know, I don't want to have that mentality anymore where I'm like, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. Like, no, I do care what people think about me, and I want people to see me for who I am, you know? Mm-hmm. So back to the five-and-a-half-year relationship. Yes, ma'am. Um, <laughs> how did you know, like, <clears throat> I need to get out of this, and what did you do? So, it, I mean, I think I touched on it a little bit. It was really toxic, and... I think that there comes a point, no matter what it is, even if it's a relationship or it could be a friendship, Mm -hmm. you know, if they continuously let you down, they continuously do things that hurt you, eventually it's going to, it's going to stick. And I think going back to the religion thing, this is what I've always said since I've left that relationship is I think that God knew that I would never leave someone that, because I am, I'm one of those people, I'm loyal to a fault. If I love you, like I'm going to have your back no matter what, like you could, you could do whatever to me I mean I saw it happen this guy didn't treat me right and I would have fought the ends of the earth for him I mean my friends bashed him and I I wouldn't let it happen like not in front of me at least my family they didn't they weren't happy with me being in that relationship but he just he let me down and let me down again and again and I will say like the last six months of that relationship I was checked out like and you will hear about how women go through relationships and like mentally they leave someone before they physically do. And that is 100% true in my case, at least the last six months I was checked out because I continuously got let down. And then there was a point where I just it didn't leave the back of my head. Yeah. And I heard something recently. It was on TikTok, but it was called like dating them until you hate them. And it's true. Wow. And that is really, really hard. Like it's kind of tough to say, but it's true. That's exactly what I did. Like it got to the point where. I didn't feel anything for him. He would be goofy, and I just, like, it was, you know how they say, it was the (laughs) ick. And I used to love how he got goofy, and eventually, like, any time I looked at him, I just thought of everything that he did to me, and I was like... I think I saw that TikTok, where it's like... Yes, date him until you hate him. And (laughs) I, I, I saw that TikTok where she was, this girl was explaining how, like, a guy... A girlfriend will, like, ask a guy to, like, do something, yes. and he doesn't do that. So she starts a little fight with him, and mm-hmm. it's like, I don't like that you don't do this for me. And then he doesn't change it, and then everything he does, she starts to, like, mm-hmm. see fault in, mm-hmm. and then she, like, it's loses like a that interest. Yeah. yeah. But so, like, my question is, if you didn't, like, get the ick, and you didn't, like, whatever, what was the term you used? Um... Date him until you hate him? Yeah, Is that what if you, said? you Yeah, yeah, If you, like, didn't have that mentality, do you think you would have had the strength to leave him otherwise? Like, Well, I was going to say, like, going back to the re- religion thing, I think God knew I wouldn't leave him unless I didn't have feelings for him. So even if I didn't get the ick, there was still nothing there. Like, you know, whenever you hug your boyfriend now or you kiss him, there's still something there. You know, that's a comfort. He didn't feel like my home anymore. Yeah. And I felt so out of place. And I think that 
God knew, like, I'm such a loyal person. I felt bad for him. Like, I felt like I needed to leave him because he wasn't with somebody that loved him anymore. And that was, it's just crazy to think. And it's still my mentality. Like, I felt bad for him knowing that I was the one that was beaten down so bad that the love that I was willing to give had run out. And you, I'm one of those people, like, I never thought that that could happen. But you continuously let someone down, like, eventually it will. Like, love runs out. And I will say, too, like, I was one of those girls that cared so much. I was known as being crazy, psycho. And towards the last six months, like, I think you realize, too, you know, oh, she know she's calmed down a lot. Like, this is awesome. I'm out with my boys, and she doesn't care what I'm up to do to doing. Like, she's going to bed without saying goodnight. Like, this is awesome. I don't have anyone to, you know, relay what I'm doing. Um, that means that your girlfriend will probably leave you soon, boys. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> if she doesn't care anymore, that is a red flag, and that's what was going on. Like, I slowly started to just be in a little hole, and I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And I will say, too, like, I started working at the golf course when I was still dating him, and I was around a bunch of people that didn't know me. Like, they weren't from Rensselaer, so they didn't know that I had been in this long relationship. And I will say, like, there were some guys that tried, like, to pursue me, and they would compliment me, and I was with someone that stopped doing that. And there's a point in time where some men, like, get really comfortable in their relationship, and they stop doing that to their girls. Like, I can't remember a point in time like for example my eyes were complimented in that relationship as soon as I left it even before I left it that was like the first thing that men you know said about me it was like your eyes are so beautiful and I was like I'm beautiful you know it was one of those things like I hadn't heard it in so long and that kind of sparked it too like I'm with someone that doesn't see me for who I am for yeah. who I am and, and see you at all. yeah yeah it doesn't see me at all a hundred percent and uh that's what helped me leave if you're with somebody that's not giving you what you deserve like that's it that's a wrap right there um so that's what helped me I will say and we've talked about like having those plans in the future like I'm your best friend and I remember her talking like oh I want to be married by 21 mm-hmm and here I am. <laughs> yeah like here's life yeah. like God's like um no like this is how it's gonna go and the vehicle I bought is the ugliest little thing and if I told you why I bought it it would make you cringe I I it I was like 2020 COVID and I bought the vehicle it's like a little SUV and it's like the heaviest little thing I bought it because I thought that I was gonna have kids by now like oh my or at least in two years and I was like well that'll last me for so long and I'm so upset now like I drive it around I'm like I want to be in a car like I miss this shit and <laughs> it's driving crazy a bus. <laughs> yes like I was ready to have I wanted to have kids and stuff and it's crazy to think now because it's just like life has taken a I don't know. It's just, Isn't that life, though? Like, yeah. You really, you you think that you know what's going to happen, but just throws you the biggest curveball. Right. I always say God is a comedian. Really? Because <laughs> he, he yeah. you can have everything set up so perfectly, mm-hmm. and, and he's he just like, goes Ugh. opposite, like, nope. <laughs> yep. You thought. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a planner till I die, and I'm telling you, like, I had all of these plans, and not one of them went the way yeah, that like, I thought. first baby's going to be named yeah. Jordan. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I had the first, middle, last name all picked out. I had a list that has been deleted. It, <laughs> it is not a thing. Those those baby names have been burned out of my memory. But I will say, like, I, I had all this shit planned. And then going into that last six months, I was like, oh, my God. Like, and it kind of hit me, too. Like, I'm young. I don't want to have kids. Like, I don't, yeah. don't want to do you this have right so now. so much time to live. Yeah, and- exactly. And I was – and even so like being around the other guys and them complimenting me and stuff and I was like there are totally different men out here and I will say like the man that I'm dating now oh you have a boyfriend I do sorry sorry, guys (laughs) yeah I do and he's the best ever and I will say like during the time that I was going through the breakup and stuff I I was single for about a year and a half and I was I mean like I was saying these crazy snapchat stories I was some party girl I I literally there was a point in time I leaving this relationship it just made me have a really bad relationship with men like I will say and it's horrible to say like I hated men like they they all (laughs) gave me the ick it's awful to say but I did they all gave me the ick and I just like I wanted them to I don't want to say feel hurt but like (laughs) I I just had all of this pain that I was and I was throwing it on other men. Like, I thought it was funny whenever they would be like... You're like, no, you're a peasant in my eyes. Yes, <laughs> yes. I thought it was funny when they would be like... 
I, like there were a couple times I got love bombed and I was like this is ridiculous because I treat you like shit and you're saying that you love me like and I thought that it was funny like this is horrible and I met the man that I'm dating now like we were I, and I went to my mom because seriously none of these guys made me feel any s- sort of way and whenever my boyfriend now looked at me it felt like a movie and I went home and I was like mom something about this guy like I don't know what it is but I've never felt the way that I felt with him and it was just like time stopped and it sounds stupid to say but it's true and I've been inseparable with him ever since we started to you know we talked about that. yeah it all was all three of us in a happy healthy <laughs> relationship well, yeah so if you're going through a breakup and you think that like I don't know like you have that ick with every single man like it's just you haven't met the right one yet for sure and don't let yourself fall into like the single culture that it is now like sleep with everyone party with everyone like be yourself if that's not who you are like not saying judge anybody that is that way but if that's not who you are like it's okay like you're gonna find your person but it just might not be the ones that are thrown at you right now and I I don't know I'll say like the wait was definitely worth it so and he's totally different than anyone I've yeah. ever been with. Like, yeah. it's something that I didn't expect, and it's been the best surprise ever. So I will say that. Well, we're running out of time, but we're going to have to have you back on. Oh, my gosh. This you want to be a permanent, a permanent guy? <laughs> yeah, I would love it. <laughs> but you uh. gave so much advice, and I think so many people can learn from this. Because, yeah. like I said, we all have this, like, purpose anxiety. Like, we all want to have this plan in life when <laughs> it's life. It's going to throw a curveball, and... You're going to be in those situations like, who am I? What am I doing? But I think this has just been great. So thank you so much for coming on. Of course. Thank you. I honestly couldn't think of a better second episode for Heart to Heart. Thank you so much for coming. And I'm so happy I got to meet you. This is a beautiful new trio alliance that just (laughs) formed right here. Do you have any last words? I don't. Thank you guys for having me. And like I said, if you ever need anything, just let me know. I mean, it was great to meet you. And Mm -hmm. I look forward to, you know, another episode. Let's do it. I'm excited. All right. right. Cheers, Cheers. ladies. Heart to heart out.